When should we teach kids about transgender issues? I'll be talking to Cataluna Enriquez from San Francisco about her journey in Queen, California and Queen, USA. And who is her favorite to win Miss World Philippines? Leave your comment below and tell me who is your favorite to win Miss World Philippines 2017. To talk to Sahar. to talk about I'm online with you now before I go to before I go further I would like to tell you guys that today is my birthday but I'm not celebrating it usually I don't celebrate it but I share my birthday with some really beautiful lovely people uh, Jody Lynn happy birthday Jody <laughs> if you're watching this I just want to wish you a quick happy birthday uh, and also Satino Satino is your birthday as well uh, and Andy I think it's Andy that is his name we share the same birthday uh, I hope you guys are having fun and enjoying yourself to the fullest I don't celebrate my birthday because there's nothing fun about getting older <laughs> I don't want to get old. So yeah, so uh, so that I can see some of you joining. Hello, Kenny. Kenny Samuels just joined. Hi, Giselle. Hi, Robbie B. Robbie, Robbie D. How are you? Those are all my friends. How are you? How are you? How are you? I hope you're all okay. <laughs> yeah, my friends are joining. Okay, all right. So let me get on with it. Let me look for the the videos. Okay, so I haven't actually posted a video. I thought I posted a video, but I haven't. So I'll go back to the topic in a minute. But first up, let's watch Cataluna's, um, Cataluna's videos, uh, Cataluna's interview and her introduction. But first up, the into introduction to Cataluna and who she is and what she's doing with her life right now. The biggest contribution the transgender community has given to the world is the image of self-love. This is a journey of suffering, a moment of discovery, and a time of growth. This is my story. My name is Catalina Enriquez, 24 years old, a costume and graphic designer, and I am the reigning queen in California and Queen USA 2016, and I am also a trans woman. Queen USA 2016 is California. Yeah! Being crowned as Queen California and Queen USA 2016 is beyond anything I wish for. It gives me a voice, but also gives visibility and awareness for individuals who can relate to my story and what I've been through. Growing up, I wasn't always the happiest person. I don't remember much of my childhood, but everyone has always known that I was different. I didn't have the best relationship with other people besides my sister and my mother, who was away working to provide for my family. At that time, I lived my life being my own father, who was alcoholic and abusive. I remember there was a time he almost ripped my ear off and all my mother could do was hold me tight and wipe the blood off my ear. I've always had a closer bond with her. When she was away, I would sneak into her room and try on her heels and dresses. We moved to California to live with my father at age 10 with the toxic relationship we had, I had to hide my real self and constantly argue about things. I honestly didn't think anything could go much worse. One night, a man who I thought was going to be special for me grabbed me and I was raped. At home, I was very, very different. I had to wipe every inch of makeup I wore at school before I would go home and then cover the girly clothes I wore into baggy sweats. He actually caught me many times and told me how I was a disgrace. It came to the point that I got so tired of the constant arguing that I was just ready to end my life. 
It ended with me asking if he would accept me for who I am or accept that he has a dead son. I believe it's very important to have support from your family or your friends. The lack of support is one of the reasons the suicide rate for transgender is 42%. So as part of my advocacy, I went back to my high school and told my stories to the students and how we can move for a better future, especially for the LGBTQ community. It was a very emotional moment for me. It was the place I started my transition. And it all began with my dearest friend, Regenda, applying eyeliner on me. And in that instant, I felt beautiful and at peace for once in my life. But like the rule of nature, once you stand out from the crowd, you fall as a prey. And that's exactly what happened to me. It started with the name calling, having things thrown at you, to having forced out to use any restroom. I don't think I would ever be in this place I am now if it weren't for my friends and a man who taught me to accept and to love myself. Now that I have a stronger bond with my father, my adopted family, and my relationship, I aspire my reign fighting for equality and awareness for my community. As a survivor myself, I want to use my story, my strength, and my wisdom to be a voice and empower brothers and sisters across the world to stand proud and embody self-love. At the present moment, I'm taking my time learning about other people, attending community events, and working on my career and personal projects such as working with the youth and uplifting the image and persona of the trans community. All this, of course, wouldn't have been possible without the guidance and hard work of Mother Karina Samala and St. John's Well Child and Family Center. Together, they opened many doors and opportunities for me that I've always dreamed of. St. John's generosity has changed not only my life, but many lives of people from different backgrounds in the trans community. I still struggle from time to time about my past and insecurities, but as long as I know that I am growing and looking at my experiences as challenges to become better, then I know I am living a successful life. Everyone always asks, what's the next move? To be honest, I'm not quite sure, but my reign has just begun. Hi guys, welcome back. That was Kathleen's video. You're going to listen and watch her video, my interview with her in a minute. Um, we're going to have the conversation in a minute. But I just wanted to say hello to some people who just joined us. Hello, Eras. Hi. Hi, Eras fam. How are you? Missed you so much. I know you were in Barcelona with Catalonia and I when we competed at Miss Transstar International. We miss you so much. How are you? I hope you're okay. Hi, Marianne. Marianne just joined. Hi, beautiful. Marianne, love you so much, girly. Um, hi, Janet Cena, love you too, love you so much. Thank you for joining. Hello, Mr. R. Peter. R. Peter Wallach says he likes the video. Thank you so much for joining joining the show. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Catalonia and I had discussions about uh, all sorts of things, and um, you know, when we're in Barcelona, and we talked about everything. So, um, and then I decided that I want to have on the show because she's such an interesting woman and I wanted to I wanted to share her with you guys because she's planning to join a beauty pageant very soon and I wanted to see if she could share her share her life story with all of you. So this is the story. Hello Catalina! Let's Hello. see you. Hi. Good to see you. It's an honor to talk to you. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I want to find out more about your endeavors and your future projects. So please, can we start by you telling me more about your life history and how you came about living in California? So I was actually born in Pampanga, Philippines, mm -hmm. and 
I was living there for about 10 years and my parents were um, never together. So my mom was living in Japan and my dad was working in the US. And my mom decided by age 10 that it was, pop it was the best for me and it was ultimate sacrifice for her to let us go to America and to live a better life. And ever since I was 10 years old, I was just been living here in San Francisco, California. Yeah. yeah. So, do you miss Philippines at all? Do you miss the food and I, the people? Yeah, I do. I, I love the food, absolutely. Do you and ever the, go back? Yes, um, hopefully soon again. Um, I was actually there um, last year. I went to El Nido, Palawan, which I recommend to everyone. But the Filipino culture and the tradition will always be in me. and. You know, I, I always love that about me, but America is my home and I live my love with that American spirit, but the Philippines will always be in my heart. I know that you've been to the Philippines as well, right? Yes, I have. I've been to the Philippines like three times and I absolutely adore it. And I hope to go back very soon again uh, because some of my li most life-changing moments uh, have been in the Philippines. Yeah. I miss the food and I miss the people. So I hope to go back very soon. I, I was going to ask you now more questions about your pageant history uh, and how you got into uh, beauty pageant. So please could you uh, share with my audience uh, what are your pageant history and how you came about competing in beauty pageants, please? Yeah, so actually um, it all started with, um, I met you at Miss Trans Star International. Yes. And I made it to top 10 and I went home with Miss Photogenic and after that it was actually a week after um, so after I left um, Barcelona a week later there was Queen California and I was kind of discouraged to join the pageant but my friends pushed me and so I did it and I was actually shocked because I won yeah. but when I won they told me are you representing for California as USA and the Queen USA was just about three or four weeks after that and I had to do huge preparations from the gowns and designing costumes and stuff like that and I honestly didn't think I was going to win because it was such a short frame for me and during the pageant itself I was actually beating my dresses and doing my costumes and when they started naming um, top two or three I was like okay this is going to be me somewhere in the top two or three and then I didn't hear my name. And then I thought, okay, I lost. It's okay, I can do better. And then they announced me as the winner and I was actually in complete shock and I turned around and was crying and applauding. And it was it was such an amazing moment for me. Um, Kelly Osborne, Gina Rosero, Caitlyn Jenner was all there and it was absolutely amazing and unforgettable for me. I was, I was elated i was screaming and shouting i was like please tell me you won because i was seeing the pictures i was incredibly excited and so happy and knowing that i know you but it was it wasn't surprising because i knew you were going to do very well in queen you california and queen USA. Awesome. remember teaching each other for um, i know <laughs> each other and your advice helped me so much and i lived on I'm glad it helped. And also, I know you have an amazing news for us when it comes to the pageant project, next, the next pageant project you'll be getting up to. So please could you tell us more about that? Next, next uh, pageant world, I'm going to be continuing my advocacy on talking to uh, schools about the transgender community and my life experiences from having a broken family, victims of rape and domestic violence. I'm going to use my voice completely and I'm also going to be competing for Miss International Queen this Yay, year. Yay, that is fantastic <laughs> news. <laughs> yes, yeah. Miss, yes. So. I think you are the embodiment of Miss International Queen. If you don't win it, I will be like questioning the judges because I think <laughs> personality-wise, intelligence, beauty, you have it all. You are the total package. Thanks. So I think you do fantastically well. You are my Miss International Queen 2017 or 2018, yeah. as they put it. Um, uh, so, yeah, so please tell me more about your advocacy. I would like to know more about what you do for your advocacy. So, um, from time to time, I actually for um, winter season, uh, me and a bunch of trans women collect things and uh, like warm clothes and food, and we pack food and then we hand them out to homeless people in um, San Francisco. And then also, I try to work on schools and talk about. Um, 
my experiences growing up as a trans woman and the things I deal with from, you know, like my issues growing up and bullying in school and outside as a victim of rape and domestic violence. So, so is that your main advocacy that you will be focusing on throughout your reign? Yes, I think it's important to share your stories and use your voice as a guide to um, help others. I mean, we should all live our lives as messengers for the next generation and the, generation, the next generation will be the future. So I think it's best that we all use our knowledge and experiences to help make the generation better. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, one other thing I was going to ask you is about, you know, because you and I in Barcelona, we talked lately about uh, uh, domestic violence in the trans community and why it's very silent. Do you have, uh, could you give us some uh, advice and what your views on domestic violence in the trans community? Uh, I absolutely think that it's wrong to just hurt anyone and put your hands on anyone. But my advice is to speak about it. Don't be scared. I know that as a victim myself, you don't know you're, that you're a victim when you're in it. But it's also important to hear other people's perspectives. And um, when you're ready to use your voice and to really make a difference about it. And I think for me, by, doing, by talking about it, it helps me recover, but it also helps other people as well. And I think that's absolutely great. Luna earlier and I'll be uh, talking to her again and you'll be hearing uh, her point of view on this today's topic which is the lawsuit uh, there'll be a lawsuit perhaps for the uh, kindergarten teacher who was teaching transgender kids about uh, were teaching children or tr uh, kindergarten children about transgender issues and then introducing a transgender child to the to the to the kids and the parents were outraged they were incredibly angry like upset that their kids are being taught about transgender issues and this happened in California as well so I wanted to hear Catalonia's point of view but I will be asking her that later but first up I would like to show you the video now because I've uh, set up the video so that you can see and what I will share over and over again is how proud I was of my students an emotional Rockland Academy teacher addressing a packed house of parents, many furious about her decision to discuss the topic of gender identity inside her kindergarten class. It was never my intent to harm any students, only to support them through a difficult situation. The teacher defended her actions to read two books she says were given to her by a transgender child going through a transition. The kindergartners came home very confused about whether or not you can pick your gender, whether or not they really were a boy or a girl. Parents say besides the books, the transgender student at some point during class also changed clothes and was revealed as her true gender. And many parents say they feel betrayed and blindsided. I want her to hear from me as a parent what her, her gender identity means to her and to our family. Um, not from a book that may be controversial. My daughter went home crying, shaking, so afraid that she could turn into a boy. The issue was not on the agenda, so parents spoke out during Monday night's public comment. It's really about the parents being informed and involved and, you know, giving us the choice and the rights about, you know, what's getting introduced to our kids and at what age. Many teachers also speaking out in support of what transpired inside the classroom on the last days of the academic year. Head in the direction of banned books or book lists or selected literature that should only be read inside or outside of the classroom. I think that that's a very dangerous direction to go. <laughs> As you can tell, the parents were incredibly angry and upset. Some of them want to sue the school. They want to take the school to court and all of that. And in my head, I'm like, well, but they're teaching the children about fellow human beings and people they might experience or people they might meet in the future. So for parents to be upset about that, it's just, I find it shocking and I find it surprising that um, they'll be angry about that. So I don't know what your point of view is. Do you guys think it's okay? And it's, um, do you think the parents were right to be upset? I would like to hear your point of view. There's also another video that uh, I would like to show you because I think that video says a lot really as in what it means um, to be a, a child who don't know much about trans and trying to educate them uh, about what uh, being trans is because this is an example of, uh, of children being taught about transgender issues. 
What does it mean? Having sex indoors? I don't know. Thank you guys, first off, for being here to talk about gender. My name is Hennessy. What gender do you think I am? Beth? Uh, male. Cool. Anyone else? I heard earlier that you were transgender. You're right, and you're right. I'm a transgender male. When did you first realize you were transgender? I didn't know I was a girl until someone told me I wasn't. It wasn't until way later that I heard the word transgender for the first time, although I've always been a guy. There's a lot of other words and terms that we can used to interact with all kinds of people in the world. So let's let's talk about them. Transgender, I think it means your sex doesn't match up with your gender. What do you think about transgender people? Are they all gay? Or? No, it's a different category. Hey, so <laughs> then tell me what sexual orientation is. I'm not really sure. Okay, who you want to be with? Who you're attracted to? Z, Zer, like when you don't call yourself male or female. Z and Zer has been one of the gender neutral pronouns created for people that don't identify with he and her. Gender fluid, it's like I don't always know where going. Going. It's like, yes, I don't know. It's like more masculine one day, more feminine the other day, and your identity shifts. Cisgender. The sex and the reproductive organs that you were born with match your given gender identity at birth. Intersex is when someone's body parts isn't exactly penis or vagina. It can be both, it can be half of each. If they're a little bit different, you're intersex. A gender. Like you don't really identify with either male or female and you're kind of in the middle. Calling yourself a man doesn't feel right. Calling yourself a woman doesn't feel right. What do you do if you're agender and you're going to like, the bathroom? Which one would you go to? Just whichever one has a shorter line. That's what I'm saying. Children are very innocent and kids are easy to talk to. Kids are easy to have a conversation with. Kids are, they're innocent. So uh, having a conversation about gender, sexuality and identity with them, I don't see why parents are upset about it, uh, up to the extent of, of going to sue, uh, sue the parent. Um, blessing a dead baby said, uh, I honestly think the, the parent were right to be upset because those kids are too young to understand uh, that, that topic. It's very confusing to them. Um, and I think that parents should have say, if, if such topics should or not should be discussed with their kids. That is a very good point, you have a good point, because I think parents should have the right and the decision to choose what you teach your children. But in a situation where you, as a parent, you're not teaching your kids about transgender issues, uh, I'm sorry, if they go to school, then they should learn about it in school. Um, that is what schools are for. Uh, if the kids are going to a school, then they should learn, in my opinion. Um, um, and like you're teaching about male and female gender, there are other genders. So why not teach them the same as, as well? If you're teaching them about sexuality, there are different sexualities. So why not talk to them about it? The younger they are, the better. Um, but I can understand why the parents are angry and I can understand where you're coming from, person. But I still think that as a human being, we should be more open-minded and let our kids uh, teach our kids about situation in life that they might be exposed to when they are a lot older. But again, even though they're young, gender is is an important issue that's very important to have a discussion about us, be it a parent or no parent. And as a child, most kids, uh, trans kids will tell you they knew since they were little, even before kindergarten. Like I knew that I was a woman since I was a kid. It was only when I was growing up and people telling me that I'm not who I am, but I've always known. So in that case, if I was in that kindergarten class, I would have felt very much in place and very happy with people talking uh, about something that I I would have loved to hear about when I was a lot younger, because it would make me feel that I'm normal. It would make me feel that I am a human being like the rest of the people in that classroom. So yeah, so 
uh, as a trans woman, I would have preferred it if it was taught in school, and I wouldn't have the suicidal thoughts. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have the confusion that I had when I was growing up. I would have known that yes, perhaps I fit into this category. I won't be. Uh, I won't go through the pain that I went through growing up, in my opinion. So. Um, so I'd like to hear more of your views. Uh, our Peter Wallach said, I think the teacher should have sent home a note to the parents for advice before actually teaching at that age. You're right. And also with the whole reveal, when a trans child came out in their true gender, putting on a clothes in the true gender, coming out in front of the kindergarten class, I think that was wrong. I think the teacher should have contacted the parent first and maybe written a letter to warn the parent first and let the parent decide if that is what they want or not. So I I totally agree with that. I think that is a better idea, um, a better idea to have. So yeah, so let me hear your point of view. Let me hear more of your view, views. But I want to play one video for you because I want you guys to see what a psychiatrist said about young trans kids and how early that they know that who they are. And if they're, if they're that young, and they know that young, is it not better to teach all um, children that uh, trans kids do exist so that it will stop the bullying and it will, it will increase and encourage more inclusion of the community into the wider society. I think by then we'll have less, if we have that, we'll have less of the suicide rate because we have 41% of suicide rate and it's the highest among anywhere in the world. So please watch this and tell me what you think. It's actually really common for transgender children to know at a really young age that their gender is different than what was assigned at birth. Um, I see transgender patients all the time who tell me, you know, I knew when I was a toddler or I was four or five years old. Um, and what happens is that these transgender children try to tell people, hey, I'm not a boy, I'm a girl, or vice versa, or I'm not either a boy or a girl. Um, and they're told, no, you, you can't do that. Um, and when transgender youth are not affirmed in their identity, they are much more likely to experience very poor mental health outcomes. They can um, become victims to bullying, to abuse and trauma. They can be um, kicked out of the home and become homeless. They can drop out of school. On, on the contrast, transgender youth who are affirmed and validated by their families and by their parents are found to not have any increased risk of depression. And this is quite remarkable because we know from national surveys that on average transgender youth and adults have a suicide attempt rate of 40%, which is much higher than any other population that I've seen in psychiatry. Um, and I think that the, the um, lesson to be learned is that if we can provide a gender affirming environment for transgender youth and children from a very young age, then we can reduce the uh, mental health uh, burden that these um, children experience just by being affirming and um, creating a safe and welcome space in schools um, by teaching other children um, to be accepting and welcoming of kids who don't fit into the normal gender binary. As you can see, the, even the psychiatrists say, said it plainly well. It's very difficult for young trans kids when they're growing up because they're not exposed to that. And uh, it's very hard. Hi, Joanne! Joanne and Julian just joined us. How are you, Joanne? Beautiful, Joanne. So, yeah, so you can see that um, even the psychiatrists uh, said it as well that it's. Um, it's a very common if the child is more affirmed and accepted uh, they have more chances of living a better life in the future uh, so it's sad but unfortunately that is the way life is um, uh, as much as uh, it would be nice in my an ideal world people will be more accepting and tolerant of fellow trans people and LGBT people in general but unfortunately that doesn't it doesn't work that way uh, majority uh, tend to be incredibly negative and open um, and not tolerant about trans issues because they haven't perhaps not met a trans person before or they've only they go by what they read in papers and what they read in books because what they read in papers are incredibly uh, derogatory and sensationalized like calling trans uh, tra the trans process they use the word like sex sex change sex change this or sex change that they make it sound very weird um, because to them it is weird so yeah so um it would be nice to hear more from you guys if you can so 
Now I would like to talk to I would like to talk about Miss World Philippines because that for me is another interesting issue that I always talk about is beauty pageants. You know I don't love my beauty pageants. I can't go without talking about, uh, about beauty pageants. So I'd like to know who is your favorite. If you are from the Philippines, it would be interesting to hear who is your favorite to win Miss World Philippines. Uh, many people are supporting Win Win to win uh, because apparently she is the favorite. I don't I don't quite get why everybody is supporting Win Win. But it would be, uh, I would like to hear from you to say um, why you think Win Win should win it. Uh, Francis, Francis, Francis said he wants Win Win to win. He left a comment under my video saying he wants Win Win to win. So that should be interesting. Um, so for me now, I would, for me, the person I want to win the pageant is Chelsea Manello, the black girl, because she's unique and her life story is very inspirational. And it would be nice to, for people in the Philippines to learn more that black girls are beautiful. Chelsea, the one you're looking at right now. She, that black girls are beautiful. She went through difficulty in life uh, growing up. She's 17 years old and she went through a lot of discrimination because you know in the philippines the dark skin is not seen as beautiful anyone with the dark skin is not seen as stunning so she did go through quite a lot to become her true self so it would be uh it would be interesting to see to hear your point of view on that if a black person can ever represent philippines in an international beauty pageant i don't see that happening but it would be interesting to see as well okay so let's see um um Let's hear uh, Cataluna's, I think we should hear Cataluna's uh, point of view on that. Let's, let's see who is her favorite to win Miss World Philippines, because I think she, we talked briefly about that. So um, one of the subjects I wanted to hear your views about is that it's uh, Miss World Philippines. You know, it's taking place next month and I would like to find out more about your preference and who do you think is going to win or who are the top runner for you? Please, please share that with my uh, Miss Run is so unpredictable, but my choices, my top three choices, three, my top three choices for um, uh, Miss World Philippines would be Win Win, Laura, and Cynthia. But they're all very different. So Win Win has the complete package, a true Filipina, but I feel like she's lacking height. And then there's Laura as well, who's absolutely gorgeous. But I think she is kind of like a duplicate of Catriona Gray, who is also a duplicate of Megan Young. And I think, you know, that we need to represent something else. And there's also Cynthia, who is just gorgeous and very soft in the face and stunning. But I feel like she's lacking stage presence. So Why are you guys laughing? we'll see. It's going to be very, very interesting. I'm trying to clear my throat. We'll just have to see, I guess. That is true. Uh, unfortunately, with beauty party, we can't really tell who's going to win. Uh, uh, I guess that judges have their preference or the organizers have their preference. And that is what makes beauty party fun for me. So, sorry, I was clearing my throat there. I can see that you guys were laughing at me. How very dare you. So, do you think I'm no human being? I shouldn't clear my throat. <laughs> How very dare you. Love you too, Kuraja Moho. Hello. Hi, Peach. Peach Ochopantra. How are you, Peach? Uh, thanks for joining the show. So yes, okay, so now we she gave a very good analysis of who she wants to win Miss World Philippines and I think they're all valid, don't get me wrong, but I have mine. Mine is Chelsea Manello and I want Chelsea to win. Why? Because it will be a nice statement that black is beautiful and that Filipinos can love a black person. So let's have a look at Chelsea's video and you can judge by her video, you can tell by her video why you think she's deserving. I think she will do better in Miss Universe, but have a look. 17 years old, I am from Mekawayan, Bulacan. I was born, raised without my real father. Me and my mom went to America, in Las Vegas, for me to study there. But then my mom had to come back because she has to study as well. She was young. My childhood was full of cries because I was bullied. <laughs> I was so dark. Of course, the other kids wouldn't understand what my race is. Now I am Black American. I would always come home to my mom crying. Na, mom, bakit iba ako I liked to play when I was a kid, and, and no one wanted to play with me. I'm just so thankful, kasi yung mom ko na lang yung taong nagsu support sa akin and my dad. When I entered the pageant at school, unfortunately, I wasn't chosen 
to be the representative in our school. But then my mom said, no, no just sige, pursue it. I may be not beautiful, but I am unique. That ugly duckling can turn out to be a beautiful swan. I opened an account in Instagram. Someone gave me a message from a magazine and then asked for me if I can do a photo shoot for them. And I was like, Mom, Mom, take the yung, yung message na to. Tapos yung mom ko na iyak din siya sa niya. And di ba yung dream mo? I was so scared na mag-reply dun sa message kasi bumalik sa akin yung mga comments ng tao. My mom gave me a message. She encouraged me. Show them the story of how that ugly duckling can turn out to be a beautiful swan. Despite na ko ano yung sinasabi nila sa akin na sobrang sakit, sometimes it's a learning for me to move on, to go forward. I like to challenge myself with what I want. Yeah, so very thankful ko with my mom and with my dad, with my family, with my friends. Kasi sila yung nandyan sa akin to support me. Mom, <laughs> you're my best friend, my sister, my teacher, and my everything. I want to give back to you. I want to show you na lahat ng tinuro mo sa akin, it's in me para matuto ako. And I'm thankful kasi ikaw yung nandyan para sa akin lagi. So as you can tell, she is a stunning woman with a beautiful heart. Why would you not give her the crown? Seriously, as in like just knowing her alone as a human being, she will make a great inspirational woman and a great representative for the Philippines if she wins. But I think that Miss World is always, as they put it, a cooking pageant. <laughs> Madame Julia already knows who the winner is. She already knows perhaps Miss China is going to win it. So I I think that Miss World is not the best pageant for her. I think that Chelsea would do better in Miss Universe. If she represented the Philippines in Miss Universe with her story and her life story, she would do very well in Miss Universe. You have to remember that Miss Universe now, they only want inspirational girls. They don't want beautiful girls. Beautiful girls don't don't make a beauty queen. You want a woman who has a story, a woman who can inspire people, a woman who can make a difference. Like, you know, we're just looking at Chelsea alone. Even her presence in a beauty, international beauty pageant will make a grand statement. So yes, I think she should be, that is why I think she should be the next Miss World Philippines or Miss World Universe, or rather Miss Philippines Universe. Hello Peach, how are you Peach? I, oh, oh, I don't know how to pronounce your surname. <laughs> Akuchandra, how are you Peach? Miss you so much, miss you. <laughs> Mwah. So yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you think me choosing this girl, not just because she's a black woman, yes, I am biased because she's black, but I, I support her because I think because of the difficult life she's gone through and because she's inspirational and because she has something to say. She has a story, not just a pretty face. So picking win-win to win it, everybody's going on about win-win being the winner. She is just a pretty face. That is what I think. All right, so let's watch Chelsea's second video and you can tell me if you still like her because I'm trying to convince all of you to get to, to get to um, choose Chelsea as your winner. <laughs> oh, miss you so much, Peach. Miss you so much. Oh, thank you so much. You're so kind. Makeup does magic. <laughs> I'm very hot, though. Learning is very hard about me. Thank you so much. So let's watch the second video of of Miss Chelsea. So you can tell me. I, I want to convince. I want to change your heart and change your mind. Hi. Here we are with uh, candidate number twenty-two. Do you introduce yourself? Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon and good evening everyone. My name is Chelsea Ann Manalo. I am 17 years old from Mekawayan City, Bulacan, and I am representing candidate number 22. Okay. Uh, my question to the others was, uh, you know, the advocacy of uh, this world. Uh, what can you say about that? Of course, advocacies are one of the platforms for Miss World Philippines. It is a standard for us to really promote what we want, to excel what we want for the Philippines. And 
as a candidate, I am promoting my advocacy in cyberbullying. I believe that it is not just preventing for the children, it is also from the adults. So by that, I want to put up a project, a uh, community service also, in making the children and a lot of people know that social media is one of the powerful or powerful things powerful tools that is now spreading so I think that cyberbullying should be uh, uh, should be cut it off. Thank you. So what, what person She's a pretty girl. In my opinion, she's a pretty girl, and she has a brain. At least she has a brain, anyway. Uh, and she makes sense with uh, cyberbullying, because cyberbullying is very uh, common. Um, especially in the, in, for me, as a trans woman, it's very common. I get a lot, a lot of uh, uh, nasty, hateful messages from people who don't understand what it means to be transgender. And they find transgender to be immoral. They say it to be a sin. Like I've explained it here so many times, I've talked about it here so many times, you guys already know, that I get like uh, pictures of a hanged man, um, people telling me that I will die in hell, I'm going to the hottest part of hell, uh, I'm the devil's girlfriend, people send me pictures of people killed in my on my website and all of that. Hi, my awesome mom just joined us. Hi Sandra, love you, I miss you. <laughs> miss you Sandra. So yeah, so, um, so yeah, so, uh, I get a lot of cyberbullying, so I love her advocacy. So I think um, she will make a fantastic Miss World, or rather Miss Universe, if she can get that opportunity. Um, but let's, um, I would like to, I would like to hear Catalina's point of view in a minute, but um, uh, about the topic that we're talking about, the theme of the day. For those of you who haven't joined us, who just joined us, we're talking, the theme of the day is when should we teach children about transgender issues? Should it be when they're in the kindergarten or when, or should they be older? Some people said it's not right for the teacher because it was a teacher who was teaching these children about transgender issues. And that, uh, that child was, um, the teacher was uh, being, attacked by the parents because they were angry for her for teaching uh, their the children about transgender issues and some of them uh, some some of you on here are saying no it's not a bad thing that the child children are being taught because uh, they're also part of human race like me myself I'm part of human race uh, I would love I would have loved to have the opportunity when I was a lot younger uh, when it came to that so so yeah so I would like to hear your point of view leave your leave your comment hello Chima Uche how are you you okay? <laughs> Much love, sweetie. Love you too, my dear. So, yeah, so leave a comment below. What do you think? When should you teach trans kids about transgender issues? Should we teach them when they were younger? And also, if you're watching, I'm also talking about Miss World Philippines. What do you think? Would you, uh, who should be your Miss, who would you like to be crowned Miss World Philippines? I'm going for the black girl because I'm a black girl and I'm supporting her, but she has a great, uh, story behind her. She has an inspirational story and I think she will make a great great inspirational woman for uh, Someone as an icon for young women growing up and to teach more about Bullying and why bullying is wrong So I don't want to just pick someone just for the pretty face like win-win everybody's going for win-win because she's a pretty girl So yeah, so let's have a look some of you who just joined us because you haven't seen it from the beginning I'll play the video one more time for the reason why the teachers are really upset about uh, this transgender child. So watch it and you can know for sure. And what I will share over and over again is how proud I was of my students. An emotional Rockland Academy teacher addressing a packed house of parents, many furious about her decision to discuss the topic of gender identity inside her kindergarten class. It was never my intent to harm any students, only to support them through a difficult situation. The teacher defended her actions to read two books she says were given to her by a transgender child going through a transition. The kindergartners came home very confused about whether or not you can pick your gender, whether or not they really were a boy or a girl. Parents say besides the books, the transgender student at some point during class also changed clothes and was revealed as her true gender. And many parents say they feel betrayed and blindsided. I want her to hear from me as a parent what her, her gender identity means to her and to our family. Um, not from a book that may be controversial. My daughter went home crying, shaking, so afraid that she could turn into a boy. The issue was not on the agenda, so parents spoke out during Monday night's public comment. It's really about the parents being informed and involved 
and, you know, giving us the choice and the rights about, you know, what's getting introduced to our kids and at what age. Many teachers also speaking out in support of what transpired inside the classroom on the last days of the academic year. Head in the direction of banned books or book lists or selected literature that should only be read inside or outside of the classroom. I think that that's a very dangerous direction to go. So what do you guys think? Because I personally, I think that the children, are, the parents are overreacting because, you know, trans people are human beings too. If you're teaching someone about the two binary, well, the binary gender, which is male and female, you might as well teach them about gen transgender people because we, there are some transgender people who don't fit into the gender binary, who live as separate from the gender binary. So you should teach kids about that. So that when they're growing older, they don't get even more confused. I know that as a trans person that I wish I had the opportunity when I was growing up. I wish someone told me that I was normal and that I was human like everybody else. So what do you guys think? Do you think that it was normal for the parents, uh, for the, it was okay for the parent to be angry or is it, is it wrong for the teacher to be teaching these kids in kindergarten about transgender issues and bringing out a transgender child out in the transgender child was out in himself i think it's a him yeah it's a him himself to the to the to the other kids so what do you think yeah sandra, sandra my awesome mom said uh listen to your children you will know know what's right exactly listen to the children that is the most important thing listen to the kids the kids are always right Oh, thank you so much, Sandra, for the lovely message. I miss you too, baby. Fuck, fuck the bullies. You look amazing. Keep up the good work. Um, well, I'm very proud, Mom. Oh, thank you so much. Love you. Love, I miss you so much. Thank you. So, yes, yeah, so what do you guys think? Leave a comment, leave a message, whatever you think. I would like to hear it. Now, let's watch um, the final interview and uh, with Cataluna. And I also asked her about this topic and wanted to hear from her and you know hear her in her point of view on this subject uh because the parents <laughs> the parents seem very pissed off and I, I perhaps because i'm a trans woman i didn't see anything wrong with it but you know it's understandable being a parent and then not heard of trans issues before and then your child being introduced to trans issues i can understand why they're freaking out so watch this hi here we are with uh, candidate number 22 you introduce yourself. Transgender issues. So, what do you think? Do you think the parents have the right to be angry? And is it wrong for the teacher to teach the kindergarten kids uh, about trans issues, or are they too young for that subject? It would be interesting to hear a point of view of this. Well, I think that the parents have the right to be upset. Um, I feel like kindergarten might be too young, but I know in California that we started teaching the LGBT history. I'm not sure if it's in high school, but we have been started teaching that. And as going up, I didn't, I needed those. I needed those information that we existed and that those, my community also matters because I feel like I was dehumanized and part of what I needed to understand wasn't really taught. And so that's why I think growing up, I was so depressed and I was so unsure of myself. So I think they have every right to be upset, but I think parents should also be responsible and school as well to educate people when it comes to gender and identity. Oh, that's very good. I think um, I totally understand where you're coming from. So I think uh, thank you so much for talking to me today, and uh, it's been lovely speaking to you. And I hope to see you when you come to London very soon. You remember yes. we were supposed to meet earlier in the year. <laughs> And it will happen again. I, I swear, it will happen again. <laughs> I look forward to it. Wait to see you and spend more time with you. So. Yes, it's been so long and we need to see each other because it's so, it would be so nice to have Paris. He's slow yeah. back here. I wanted. Hi, uh, Paris. Also, uh, say hi to Susan for me. Yes, I'm I'm I would say hello to Susan. Susan was here. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about you the other day, so I think she would be very glad to hear from you. So thank you so much, and I'll be in touch. And you will keep us up to date with your plans from this international thing yeah. and what you get up to. Uh, and then you can also give us updates as well, so that I can share with uh, with all my fans on my wall. Because I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to you wearing that crown. Thank so, you, thank, thank you, thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Have, I'm not sure. Okay, so have a good night, London, and then yes. afternoon, or afternoon or morning. You know? yeah. <laughs> All right, so speak to you soon. Thank you for talking to me. Yes, yeah, same here. To 
Hey, abuse, please leave your comment below. Hello, Ida Bloom. What's your opinion on the topic, Miss Sahara? My opinion on the topic is I think the children should be allowed to, kids should be allowed to learn, they should be allowed to understand. Um, kids are very innocent minded, they are very easy to educate, and they have no backbone. They have no, I don't think it's if you explain it to them well, it wouldn't be an issue. The parents' point of view and their point of view, uh, saying that the children were confused. No, 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 I think it's the, children, the parents that were confused. And it's the parents who didn't like the idea of their children being taught about transgender issues. It has nothing to do with the children. Saying that the children were confused and the children were frustrated, that is absolutely garbage. We all know that it's just the parents making a, a, a huge massive hill out of a mountain hole, out, out, of, a, out, of, out of an ant hill, just because they want uh, to get attention, more attention for themselves or just for their own prejudice. Because I think that teaching a child about normal human issue is important, it's normal. So I, the, what, the parents, uh, what the parents are doing is very wrong, in my opinion. So yeah, so um, yeah, the kids are very innocent and they're very easy to talk to. Kids are naturally innocent beings and they are easy to have that conversation with. I think for me, like I said before, it is the parent who are making a big deal out of nothing. So, so yeah, so that is my point of view. And thank you so much for joining me on the show today. But before I go, I want to say, say uh, sing some shout out to my Cataluna Enrique. Love you, Cataluna, and I wish you so much luck in Miss International Queen this year because I know you'll be competing in Miss International Queen. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to do very well. I know you will do very well because you are absolutely stunning. I hope the judges see what I, what I can see in you, and I hope they give you a chance so you can wow them and make them fall in love with you. So that is my... Uh, final notes before I go and uh, quickly uh, my my cozy mom Sandra said let uh, let and encourage uh, the child to develop uh, be their own pace um, you know, my internet is running a bit slow so somehow yeah on their own pace and they will let you know make sure they feel comfortable exactly thank you so much they feel comfortable talking to you exactly Sandra that is that's what I think as well make your kids comfortable that's the most important thing so yes yeah, so um I will go now and I would like to say thank you to all of you for watching thank you Peach for watching love you too Peach thank you so much Kapkunka Kapkunka thank you so much so Marami Salama Paul. Thank you so much, all of you. I hope I'll see you guys soon again next week. Please tune in. Either it will be on Saturday or on Sunday as well, but I'm not too sure yet. Depending on who I'm going to interview next. If you like me to interview you or if you have anything interesting to discuss with me, please send me an uh, send me a message on my website, MissSahara.com, or contact me on my Skype, Miss Sahara, all one word on my Skype. I want to have a conversation on any subject or any topic you want us to talk about. So, uh, I'm always here. So, thank you so much, all of you, and I hope to see you soon again. Bye. Should I say bye-bye? Or should I say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Bye.